Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to ALH Live. A. Lawrence Haskins here. We're at the 13th Annual Urban World Film Festival. Uh, here with me today is Shannon Riggs. She is here uh, for the premiere, the New York premiere of her film Blue, which uh, she produced. Shannon, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? I'm doing magnificently. Fabulous, fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what we can start off by asking you is just some of your background, uh, some of the work that you've done in the industry, and then we'll lead up and talk about your present work uh, with Blue. Okay, well, um, I started out in the business working in development out of college. I worked for 40 Acres and a Mule, which is Spike Lee's production company. He had a production office in Los Angeles, okay. and there was four of us. And um, we primarily, you know, read scripts, tried to find material for him to direct and to produce. Okay. Um, Lots and lots of coverage, which is when um, a script comes to you and you basically write a summary and give that to your boss to see whether or not sure. it's a project they would want to do. And I found that most uh, producers um, knew nothing about physical production. It was as if it was two separate worlds altogether. There was the development people, the studio execs, and then there were the people who actually go out and make movies. And okay. I knew I wanted to be a filmmaker. I wanted to make movies. Okay. So. Um, I took an opportunity to work for a line producer who was producing a movie called uh, Wedding Crashers. Oh. Um, and uh, yeah, a so little movie called a Wedding, movie called Wedding <laughs> Crashers. A, a college friend of mine, we had bumped into each other at an industry mixer out in LA. Okay. And um, he was working for the director at the time, and he told me that there was this really interesting producer looking for somebody to um, take under his wing. And so I thought that would be a good opportunity for me. And was this your first, like, really real gig? This was my, well, the, the Spike Lee job, I worked my way up the ranks. I was okay. there three years. Okay. And, um, and it was an amazing experience. I learned sure. so much, but I knew I needed to get on set, and this sure. job wasn't okay. on set. Right, this in terms of yeah, being on set, yeah. that was your first... That I, I, this yeah. was my first time getting on set, Excellent. and I got to do it on Wedding Crashers, okay. um, and it was amazing. But what I found out very quickly, the producer's name is Guy Rydell, and he saw that I wasn't just a set rat, but, you know, I wasn't a person who was just going to PA or something like that. Not, nothing against PAs, by the way. It's a great way to get started. Right. But I was still like reading scripts and yeah. and tracking what scripts were going into what studios. And so he thought that... Um, you had more to offer. That I had more to offer. Sure. And he had previously worked in development as well and had been a studio um, executive. And so um, while I worked on big studio movies with him, we started developing projects together to produce together. He was a true mentor. Okay. Um, it's pretty rare to find somebody who's so willing to do that. Right. Um, and while I got to work on these big studio movies and gain those contacts and that experience, right. I also developed smaller projects to produce on my own, okay. Blue being one of them. Right. And, and so what, from a, I guess from a semi-personal standpoint, uh -huh. psychologically, what was that transition like from going, uh, from being an assistant on big set to actually taking the helm yourself. Did you feel the weight? I felt the weight, very much so. <laughs> um, and it was a little odd at first. Um, I've always been and I will continue to always be a person who is willing to be part of every th aspect of it. Sure. Um, check the ego at the door, it's not productive. Um, okay. And especially in independent film and smaller budget projects, right. you, you do what you got to do. Right. And I sometimes um, had to check myself to, right. you know, wait, you are the boss. You, you know what I mean? You sure. are, you do have to. It's a balance. It's a balance. Right. Um, I've just finished producing a project called Last Call out in Los Angeles, okay. and I was like running wire for the dog. <laughs> I mean, I was doing. <laughs> Shannon, calm down. But, um, <laughs> but, but leading by example. Leading by example. Um, okay. I think that it, it's a, such a collaborative process. It takes hard work and no job is more important than another. Right. And um, you know, if everybody really comes together and if you really appreciate every different, yeah. you know, every different department's strengths, then that's when it really can come together and people can most importantly have fun right. making a movie. Yeah, I, I, think, I think this is interesting because, um, and, and surely, you know, you're not a, an actress, you know, on the screen, right? But here's what's interesting. It takes everything to make a production work. Yes. And um, I think it's just, it's, it's, it's fabulous that in such an ego-filled industry that you could take the approach, you as a person could take responsibility and, and put the vision before your own personal gratification. Yeah. And I think there's not enough of that in the industry. And um, I think that's something that, that builds for uh, you know, longevity. Uh, lasting relationship because our friend Don Wallace is, yes. is the exact same way. Now, uh, 
for those who, you know, we're going to inform you now that she was the producer of uh, on, on Blue. And uh, so we're going to ask her a few questions now about Blue. And what was that whole process like? Like, how were you first made aware right. of Blue? Well, actually, I was working on a movie called Four Christmases at New Line. Okay. And Brian Minningham, and, who is the director of Blue, yes. and Jamie Guest, the other producer, they sure. both worked at New Line. Okay. And Ryan was quitting his job, his day job, to go make Blue. Oh. Um, he didn't have it put together yet. He just knew that he was going to go make a movie, and that really inspired me. Um, wow. I really admire. I think that it takes risks. You have to make risks in this business. Nothing's going to just. There's no. There's never the perfect time Excellent. to do something. And so, um, when I heard about that, uh, I you know started asking questions. I had worked on Rocky Balboa, and I knew okay. that. Um, that was a huge inspiration for Ryan. He introduced me to Don, and if any of you have met Don, right. you, he is the most magnetic person I have ever the best. ever met. The and best. The second you meet him, you want to be a part of his vision. You want to um, do whatever you can to help facilitate it exactly. and to gain from it. And so it was on from then on. As soon as I met Don, yeah. I wanted to see how I could um, be a part of the project. And I was still working on Four Christmases, but uh, we figured it out. Um, they had already gotten pretty far in the development process of the script, so this was unusual for me, okay. um, having been a person who worked in development. Okay. Um, but I feel like the project came together mostly because of Don and people wanting to, to work with him. We were able to get a lot for the amount of money that we spent, just from people wanting the, the quality of the material. Of people just wanted to be a part right, of it. Right. And, um, and having had the director and the other producer and myself all work at you know a studio on the sure. studio level we were able to pull some favors sure. Um, sure. because they knew that it was really um, something that we all really believed in right. and, yeah. and, and, and the film I mean the film has some notable names in it some industry Absolutely. Better, Charles Malik Whitfield yeah. uh, Keith David to name a few mm -hmm. um, and from what I understand New York legend I guess you would call him Wayne Barrow is also on the production side yes. of things so this this film um, has some significant weight to it in terms of personnel, in yeah. terms of class of individuals, in terms of uh, professionalism. And I think that um, we were talking before the interview, and I was just, I mean, I was just awestruck by Shannon's, her, her, uh, her, her personalness, um, her ability to connect and her, her energy. And um, I, I, it was funny because when she came through, she came through like a like a lightning bolt, and I, I had to ask her, okay, well, what's your time frame like? And she's like, oh no, I'm good, I'm good. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but but I think I think that um, how do you, how did you see um, uh, your your personal presentation, your personal outlook on things? What impact do you feel that that had on the making of this great movie, Blue? Um, I feel like I feel like. I'm very genuine and honest, and I feel like when working with a small, intimate group like this, especially considering all the filmmakers were friends, okay. um, it's very important to have that balance of um, honesty yes. and support sure. and supporting everyone sure. involved in the project. And um, and I just think that the strength of the material is really what pulled it together. Okay. Um, it was that, you know, it was a lot of hard work. And it didn't right. come easy, right. but we were all willing to work hard. You right. know what I mean? There was there was never a time when the group was falling apart, and that is really important in making a movie, awesome. especially on a shoestring budget. Right, right. <laughs> you know, right. Yeah. and and again, I think that a lot of that has to do with being willing to you know pick up pieces that necessarily don't fall into your you know your role, um, but being willing to do whatever and help each other. It's really right. about helping each other and supporting each other through the process. Right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Shannon Riggs, industry veteran and producer. She's here for the New York premiere of Blue, starring Don Wallace, Daya Vadia, Keith David, Charles Malik Whitfield. She played an integral part of the whole process. And here at ALH Live, we are just so glad that she sat down and took the time out of her schedule to sit with us. Shannon, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>